now available from National Geographic Home Video. There is a place where dinosaurs once ruled until the winds blew across the desert and the dinosaurs were no more. But they left their secrets buried in the sand. That's really a great fossil find because it's one of the rare instances where we can capture a little bit of behavior that's 80 million years old. Take a new look at one of history's oldest mysteries when National Geographic Television takes you to the heart of the Gobi with the dinosaur hunters. Speed and stamina, strength and grace. No wonder the world was once driven by horsepower. From Mongolia to Montana, horses revolutionized our world. From farm fields to battlefields, they carried us forward in time and space. They may no longer be changing history, but horses are still changing lives. Discover the secrets of man's true best friend on National Geographic's Horses. Call 800-627-5162 to order these and many other National Geographic home videos. Hello, I'm Boyd Matson, host of National Geographic Explore. Forget what you thought you knew about dinosaurs. In this program, we'll show you revolutionary new discoveries that are rewriting history. This was the Ultrasaurus, or at least it was its front leg. The entire dinosaur was more than five stories tall. It wouldn't even fit inside this building. Hold on to your seat. Paleontologist Paul Serino is going hunting for a new kind of sauropod. It's a search that will take him on a brutal trek through the searing heat of the Sahara Desert. But even if he finds one, how will he ever get it home? It was longer than a city bus and weighed close to 50,000 pounds. To sustain its massive carcass, it would endlessly grab branches and leaves and hoover them down a 20-foot long throat. With each step, a weight greater than an eight-ton wrecking ball would hit the earth. To support such a mass of meat, bones built like steel columns descended to massive feet that would have left crater-like prints more than two feet across. So, you might be wondering, could you hear one of these things coming through the forest on a quiet spring day? I think you get the idea. It's called a sauropod, a type of dinosaur that was one of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. Hold on to your seat. And this man has the daunting task of finding one and digging it up. Hang on. All in the furnace that is Africa's Sahara Desert.
University of Chicago paleontologist Paul Serino and his team are on a bone hunt. Their main quarry is the complete skeleton of a huge dinosaur, a new kind of sauropod that's never been described before. But work in the Sahara is never easy. Miles from civilization. They are at the mercy of the desert. For Paul and the 17 students that make up his team, the expedition will be a mental and physical test that lasts four months. Three of those months are going to be spent in 100 degree weather, in dust storms and wind storms, uh, and, and digging uh, until your nails are worn off. And you really need to find adventuresome, strong, young men and women to be really excited about it and, and approach it with a great amount of energy. Leading an expedition with that kind of energy is a Sereno hallmark. At 39, he has made more significant discoveries than most paleontologists make in a lifetime. Wow. In Africa in 1993, Sereno and his team discovered Afrovenator, the first nearly complete predator skeleton ever described on the continent. In 1995, in Morocco, it was another first, the skull of Carcharodontosaurus, what may be the largest meat-eating dinosaur ever described. His finds have been so significant and so frequent, one wonders, can he do it again? The answer will have to wait, because the only discovery he's made lately is that his jack is missing. Can we put, the rock, can we put some rocks underneath there? Get some rocks! The experienced hands know, and the rookies are beginning to realize, that to make a major find in the middle of the Sahara, You've got to get there first. Okay, we got it. All right, good. That's all because our hijack is missing every year. <laughs> Five weeks ago, and a long way from here, Serino and his team arrived in Accra, Ghana, on the coast of West Africa. When the ship carrying everything they need for the expedition finally arrives in port, the crew works through the day and into the night unloading. At first glance, it's not clear whether they're going on an expedition or simply planning to open Africa's first Walmart. The huge inventory will be managed by Serino's partner and wife, Gabrielle Lyon. We're definitely stocked. We have 50 pounds of rice, 150 pounds of couscous, close to 500 pounds of pasta, uh, and then toilet paper, close to 800 rolls, and it's white, unscented. Yeah, I got a complaint about pink toilet paper one time, so. We're headed out, finally. <laughs> Once they're rolling, Paul sets a killer pace. Every day they spend on the road is one less day they can spend looking for bones. They are headed for Niger, but to get there, they must first cross Ghana, then part of Burkina Faso. That's 1,500 miles on less than gorgeous roads. The first few days are grueling and typically end in nights like this one at the scenic Hotel Mobile, a gas station parking lot. We'll try and get a couple hours uh, rest here, an hour or two rest, and then we're going to be on the road again. When they awaken after a refreshing three hours of sleep, they find that the driver of their transport truck has disappeared. So we don't know where he is. He's in town somewhere? The driver is in town somewhere? Paul has been in Africa for weeks and hasn't touched a bone. So this is paleontology? It's all part of uh, a <laughs> three-ring circus. <laughs> It's all part of, I mean, it's part of, it's a little piece of why, you know, uh, it, it just takes a lot of energy besides walking and striding in the desert to, uh, 
for actually uh, making these discoveries. Okay. At least we found the driver, though. We found the driver. Though getting this expedition across Africa is a struggle, it's nothing compared to the challenge faced by those who discovered and then tried to explain fossils in the first place. Take a prominent English museum curator of the 1600s named Robert Plott. In addition to dealing with all that hair, Plott faced a dilemma. He had unearthed a remarkable two-foot-long, 20-pound thing. But what was it? Plott believed it was part of a giant human, but couldn't be sure. Like most thinkers of his day, Plott's conception of the world was based entirely on the Bible, and there's no mention of dinosaurs nor extinction in there. So what was it? Years later, an editor saw the illustration and titled it Scrotum Humanum, for obvious reasons. And though no one was likely to have believed that they were the petrified genitals of a giant man, given 18th century knowledge about Earth's prehistoric past, which would have seemed more plausible? That it could have been the fossilized private parts of a giant human, or part of the leg bone of an even bigger lizard? It would take 100 years and many more fossil discoveries before the thinking about Earth's past left the Dark Ages behind. Serino's problems are a lot less philosophical. It's flooded. Of the last 32 hours, they've been driving 28 of them. Now Paul has to gird up for one of the great trials of any expedition, the border crossing. Get your passports out. And just stare at the vehicles and I'll see what the situation is. At border crossings, the situation is never the same. Sometimes Paul may have to haggle over the crossing fee. On other occasions, flashing a copy of National Geographic with an article featuring Paul may have the desired effect. He'll do whatever it takes to get across quickly. Ah, there's a phone call from the embassy. The team spends as much time getting over borders as they do actually driving. They're very friendly, but I, don't, I think they could use your advice. Challenging as it is, Paul wouldn't even be looking for bones were it not for 18th century scientists like Georges Cuvier. It was this French anatomist who finally concluded that there was something called extinction, that huge animals had once walked the earth. Cuvier's work inspired other scientists who made many new fossil discoveries. But in the early years of paleontology, one of the most important developments wasn't a new discovery, it was a dinner. In the 1850s, to celebrate the opening of an exhibition of life-size models of something called dinosaurs, English anatomist Sir Richard Owen was honored with a banquet. It was Owen who had captured the public's imagination when he coined the word dinosaur, which meant terrible lizard. But then the widely publicized dinner took curiosity one step further, perhaps because the meal was served inside the body of one of these beasts. Any animal whose carcass could handle a formal dinner for 12 was worth a look. And when the exhibition opened, the public was astounded. The first of many dinosaur crazes was launched. From fairs like Owen's exhibition to the New York World's Fair more than 100 years later, dinosaurs were prominently featured and became fixed in our imaginations, keeping kids up at night and driving some souls to the ends of the earth to find more of them. After five days, 14 flat tires, and not a lot of sleep, the expedition has finally reached Niger. That was the easy part. There are potentially dangerous obstacles ahead. A civil war in this area ended only recently. Violent attacks on the road, in which people were killed and vehicles stolen, happened.